Hola, el perro más estúpido. Hi, I'm Phil. Welcome to Pretty Good Cooking. Pretty good. Today on the show, rather than tonight, because we're filming in the middle of the day, we're going to show you how we make Berea tacos. This is Berea de Reis. So this is uh, beef Berea, which is kind of like a stewed beef that is frequently featured in TikToks and other social media as its taco form, sometimes called Queso Berea. And the Queso Berea is that really tender beef inside of a tortilla uh, with cheese. And then you dip that into a consomme, which of course is a nice broth that you cook the beef in. This takes a little bit of time to do, that's why we're doing it on a weekend. I don't think it is that hard to do, as demonstrated on some of those TikTok versions that John sent to me, with the assurance that the kids will love this one. <laughs> you may have noticed that I got new glasses. Here they are. Don't worry, I'm still gonna wear the old glasses too, but you know, variety is the spice of life. And I think I look cool. So let's get cooking. We're gonna start with preparing the beef. And there's a few ways you can go about this, but I believe that what you wanna do is kind of start your consomme first, and then you can add the chili sauce later. So I have approximately four pounds of beef is what I went for. And I have chuck roast and I have bottom round. Bottom round is not the most ideal cut for this in that it has less marbling than you might prefer. However, it was on super zen. So we got some chuck roast, we got some bottom round. You can see that I'm just putting it into very large chunks, which I'll throw here into my pot. To that, to enhance the consomme, which I hope I'm saying that right, I don't actually know. I'm gonna throw in some beef bones that I have. So these are just frozen beef bones, miscellaneous, and that will give us a more robust broth for the dipping. Here I am washing my hands, just so you know. I will do this many times through the recipe, but John probably won't leave most of them in so that you don't have to suffer through hand washing footage. Wow. He does it for you. Okay, to this, we're going to add one onion. This is a big ass white onion. And then we'll add some garlic. So I will throw in, let's call it one, two, three, four, five, six-ish, six-ish cloves, which we will, you don't really need to chop, but you do need to peel them. And even though we may not actually consume the garlic and onions themselves, you will typically get a clearer broth if you peel it. Okay, so we will fill this up. While that's filling up, I'm gonna go check on Vinny. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the heat on here. We'll start it on relatively high, and then I'm gonna add some whole spices. I looked at a lot of different recipes, and there are endless versions of this dish. Okay, so if you, if you make this differently, that sounds right to me. You're probably more right than I am anyways. But what I saw is that some of these whole spices get added at different times depending on the recipe you use. So my logic with this is if we put some whole spices into the consomme, into the cooking broth, one, we'll get some of that flavor directly into the beef, but it'll also be generally easier to fish them out at the end because we will be using things like peppercorns and cloves, which you can grind up, but it's kind of a pain in the ass. So I think the flavor will get in there, but we'll strain it and we'll be happy. So I'm using a small piece of cinnamon. So you can see this is maybe one third of an actual cinnamon stick. You want cinnamon, but not too much cinnamon. And then I have a couple of cloves and a few black peppercorns. So four cloves and I don't know, like a dozen black peppercorns. In addition, I'm going to add some bay leaves. If you use conventional, regular dried bay leaves, you wanna add several, maybe four to six. These Spice Island bay leaves where you can see that they look like they actually came off a tree and did not sit in between the pages of an ancient tome for approximately 14 centuries. These have way more flavor than your typical bay leaves, so I'm gonna add like two. I think that should be plenty. I am not gonna salt it at this point because as this simmers, we'll occasionally skim off some of the scum and it is way easier to do that if you don't salt things first. Why is that? I don't know. I think I have heard other people's explanations but I did not retain that information and therefore cannot pass it on to you. I will take this moment to remind you that this is not culinary advice. So don't take it as such. It's time to work with chilies. So our primary chili today will be the guajillo. I have some 
dried chilies, but I don't have the full range or the as many as I might have hoped. And I also couldn't find additional ones at the store today, but that's okay. So I think guajillo is the most frequently used for this application, but you can use other ones. So I'm gonna mainly use guajillos today. You can also use uh, chili arbols if you would like it spicier. So we'll probably throw in a couple, but not too many so that John can still enjoy it. So I am going to set up a scale. We're gonna to try to use about two ounces of guajillos today, which kind of seems like a lot to me. Okay, that looks good. And then I'm gonna use a single ancho for a depth of flavor. I, 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 I will once again acknowledge, I don't know, you, you should not be watching this for an authentic experience. So if this doesn't belong in there, you know, f me. If it does belong in there, Great, and we'll do, we'll just do a couple. One, two, three, four. Okay, so you can clean these peppers using your preferred method. Some folks like to soften them before deseeding them. I like to try to get ahead of the game, and also I don't really mind handling chilies very much. So most frequently I do exactly what I'm doing here, which is to snip the top of the pepper and then cut the side and then use my hands to get most of the membrane and seeds out. So that's what I'll be doing today and I will be carefully cleaning these peppers. If you would like things a little bit spicier, you can leave the seeds of the chili arbols in. Those are a little bit harder to clean since they're small, but I will say there's a caveat to that, which is there's an expectation that your dipping broth in particular will be very smooth. So if you leave seeds in, it will make it more difficult for it to be smooth. Not impossible. I mean, we'll still be straining today, but just keep that in mind. So I want to quickly show you how I act. I skim these things in general. This is a pretty full pot, but you can see all of this stuff that's uh, being pulled to the surface. As there is room, you essentially can just use a spoon or a strainer or whatever you got and pull out some of these impurities as they go. It will collect more over time. So there's, there's plenty of time to do this. So that's what we're doing. We're just trying to remove some of these impurities. So a lot of times when these things are cooking like so, I'll just leave a bowl and a skimmer on the side and when I walk by, I'll skim some off the top. In addition, we can get our chili soaking, which I've deseeded. This is not quite boiling, but it should be close enough because it, it feels like it's boiling. And of course, don't breathe in too deeply here or you'll regret it. But we'll get those softened up and that's that. We're just letting these chilies soak and soften up. We'll make them into a chili sauce later. But for now, the most important thing is to have that beef going. The beef will literally take hours to cook. Um, we could prep other things, but we're just not in a rush today. So we'll do that later. Okay? Okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, it's been maybe an hour and a half, something like that. Our chilies have been chilling here in this bowl. So we're gonna put them into the new food processor. That's right, this was given to us by our friend Brett Brennington Frothing Slosh. Sent me a Cuisinart Custom 14. This thing is absolutely insane. And you could just use a blender. I think that's what many people would do. But since we have it, we might as well. And John and I have decided we're gonna name this food processor Phil, because I'm the food processor and now I'm out of a job. Okay, so I think I still have some chilies, maybe some little chili bits in the liquid. That's okay. But we're gonna add some other things. And Brett warned me very seriously to not exceed the liquid line in the food processor. It's actually a pretty low liquid line, but I think we'll be okay. So more garlic is in order. So here is yet more footage of me Crushing and peeling garlic. God damn, where's Kevin when you need him? He was invited this time. Yeah, he was invited. Yeah, it's true. But Saturday is his chores day. Can't blame him. Guess he's got a lot of chores to do. Is our garlics. All right. So we'll add in, actually we'll add in some of this chili liquid. Being very careful not to go above that max liquid line. I am halfway to the max liquid line. Let the record show. And then we're gonna add some seasoning. So we'll add some oregano. Decent amount. We're gonna add some thyme. Thyme is somewhat atypical in Mexican cooking, but here it is. Ah, vinegar. We need to add vinegar. Where did I put the big vinegar? There it is. Vinegar is something that like some people add it, some people don't. I definitely recommend adding it because vinegar is great. So we'll use apple cider today. If you don't have apple cider, regular is fine too. There's that, which bumped up our liquid line a little bit more. Cumin, not so cumin. And we'll go ahead and add some, add some salt now. We didn't add any salt so far. We will certainly need to get some salt in there soon. So let's give it a whirl. It smells awesome. Take a look at what we got. 
we have a wonderful souse. Looks awesome. So here's what we're working with so far. Still fairly chunky, but <coughs> we can definitely blitz that up some more. But this is exactly what we're trying to make. I'm just gonna let it go for a little bit, but it should be super, super nice. And I think that we did a good a job, good enough job with the seeds that we should be able to just put it straight in. Brett told me that um, you could put a shoe through this and it would, it would process it. All right, that's looking nice. Yeah, that's completely obliterated. So we don't have to mess around with straining or nothing. Happy news for us. All right, so I'm gonna leave that right there. What we're gonna do now, I'm gonna fish out some onions. I'm probably gonna leave in garlics because I think that'll be fine. This beef is not anywhere near tender. It hasn't been long enough, I and mean, that's okay. So what I'm gonna do now is I am going to strain the consomme, this broth. So I'm literally just doing this to strain kind of the, the stuff we've added so far, any impurities, but I am gonna put the beef and bones back in. I'm gonna add the chili paste in, and I'm gonna add some chicken bouillon, which is an optional thing you could add for fun. Okay, I'll tell you one thing, it smells really, really good already. Okay, close enough. Then I'm gonna just throw this back on the stove, and you can see that we strained out lots of gunk, and we're left with just a nice, Consomme, which of course is very, very fatty because of all the things we put in it. And we'll continue to cook this. So we're gonna mix this and that with the other stuff. So again, it's optional, but if you're gonna bother with straining, you can see there's all kinds of crap left in the pot. So we might as well fish that stuff out and proceed. So basically what I'm doing right now is pulling out the bits that I for sure want to save, and then I will wash out the pot before I put the stuff back in. Smells good to eggy. Just to kind of reiterate, you see, I strained all of the stock. If I just put it back in there, there's all this crap. So we'll go ahead and wash that out too. Okay, now let's let's get uh, back into business. Turn our heat back on. That's the not safe thing to do, but I don't care. These shits first. You'll also see, even with um, pouring it back in, if you pour slowly, you can see there's kind of detritus at the bottom. And if you go real slow, you can avoid putting some of that back in. Let's see, I'm pouring some, some in, but there's quite a bit left in the bottom, which I'm just gonna pour out. And next we will add our sauce, and this will go directly in. You could run it through a strainer, but this food processor has seriously processed this food. If you've got some left, in your food processor blender, you can use some of that chili water soaking liquid and give it one of these. You get quite a bit of the remainder. And we'll add some Nor chicken powder, which will kind of give it that, um, I don't know, it'll be an element that would be missing, you know, if we, if we did it. And that we will mix all together like so. And I'll tell you right now that this smells amazing. It smells so good. I definitely think you need that vinegar. Well, I guess you don't need it, but I'm really happy that vinegar is in here. It smells awesome, and this is just gonna cook down and be amazing. So this bad boy is gonna simmer until pretty close to when we're ready to eat. It's been an hour and a half, so like it'll probably be at least another an hour and a half, I wanna say, until we're back. We'll be back. Okay, so the beef is tender. We could let it go even longer, but basically what you wanna do is go through. Obviously that beef is falling apart, therefore it's time. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and fish out my bones. We don't need those no more. And then we wanna shred the beef. So there's a few ways you can do this. The fork method is probably the easiest. Essentially when they're cooked enough, you can just pull out a chunk and shred it. So I'm gonna be shredding the beef and just putting it right back in. We'll be back soon. Okay, so here's our beef. You can see we've got kind of a variety of textures going on in here, and certainly it will not hurt this whatsoever to just let it continue to cook in the shredded form. So take a measuring cup, and we need around a cup of liquid. It's good. And everything at this point is just gonna be messy as hell. And while this continues to stew, we're gonna finish our prep. So we need to shred cheese, we need to cut vegetables, and we need to prepare our kind of assembly station. So we're gonna use uh, Oaxaca cheese today. We're just gonna shred it. This will be our melting cheese today. So I'm just gonna shred the whole damn thing. What else am I gonna do with it, right? All right, there's our cheese, or as they say in old Mexico, queso. Then we need our toppings, which are also a garnish, or they can be a garnish. So we'll chop up some cilantro if we wash. 
And oftentimes uh, you'll see cilantro added to the consomme itself as well. So you put it on your tacos, you put it in your, your broth. So if you don't like cilantro, you might be SOL on this particular dish. Nice little pile. We will also have some onions. I think white onions would be probably the most common that you'll see, but you can use the onion of your choosing. So I'll just go ahead and mince up half an onion. And you can find all the letters of the word onion in the phrase ooze, no, Icicles, owls, and Noel. That was a weird one. So there's our limes. So all that's left to do is to prepare our tacos. So today we'll use our nonstick skillet. And essentially what we're gonna do is gonna be similar to how you make regular quesadillas. But as I alluded to previously, the thing that might not be familiar is we're gonna dip the tortillas and fry them. So you need a container that you can easily dip things in. Start with that if we need more. We'll add more. There's our dip. We'll just yellow corn tortillas. We'll let that heat it up a little bit. All right. It's looking mighty fine. I should have mentioned like ages ago, you should taste this for seasoning. I think that it tastes excellent and it's plenty salty already. I did salt it off camera, so you'll never know the exact amount. Ha, gotcha. Let's get these bad boys going. It's messy. I mean, it just is. You could wear gloves, I guess, if you want. But you do that and in it goes. I think we'll be able to do a couple at a time and it is already splattering everywhere. Okay, we need to get that cheese on there pronto. So some cheese and our beef. Make sure that you put beef basically on one side because you are supposed to fold them up. You can see the cheese is already starting to melt. See, melting cheese. You can add some onion and cilantro now. Keep that in mind for, uh, you know, some space. Like this one will probably be pretty tough to fold, but that's okay. But I'm telling you, I think we did a pretty nice job. And then of course we can flip as well. And while those are sauteing, we will add some dipping broth, which you can also garnish cilantro, onions if you want them, you don't need them necessarily. Basically just want some kind of toasty action on the outside and melted cheese. And that's it. Okay, all the food bloggers and stuff, they like pull them apart with their hands. Oh God, it's too hot to eat. Oh good. Too hot, we'll be back. Look, I'm not gonna pull it apart. It's obviously cheesy. <laughs> Holy moly, it's so messy. Gotta dip it. Mmm. Holy moly. It's just like a celebration of beef fat. That's what it is. You feel healthy? No. <laughs> no, I don't. It's like, I don't think we already said it, but it's basically like the, it's parallel to Aju, where you just got that great, great flavor. Dip tastes good. But yeah, this is awesome. I'm excited to make a big pile of these, and then we're all gonna feel like absolute garbage when we eat them, but they'll be delicious. So that's our show today. Usually when we get to this point, look, I'm putting some salt on it. Usually when we get to this point, I'm like all done, uh, but I gotta keep making food. So y'all, uh, y'all have a good one. Happy cooking, that's how you do it. I'm busy, see you later.